Hello, my name is Pastor Joel Silverman. Thank you for watching the Regeneration Church broadcast. It's my hope that through this message, you are encouraged and made stronger in Jesus Christ and the truth of his word. Enjoy this message and may God richly bless you. To speak about how everybody is good. Everybody's gone to heaven and everybody is just happy. There's more than one way to heaven. And I sit in a hot tub a few days a week and I listen to men who are about to go somewhere. Jewish men, Indian men, uh, they all have their religions and they all speak about, about um, life and because they're all, you know, they only, not only talk about medical problems, of course when you're over 60, you're always talking about what doctor you're going to, <laughs> what aches you got, what pains you got, where you're at, and everything like that. And um, I get grieved in the hot tub. It's hard to get grieved in a hot tub. <laughs> because I see they're headed for hell. And I said, my God, they don't know Jesus. You see, people think there's many, 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 many ways. And Jesus said, narrow is the way, and I am the only way, the truth, and the life. So the Lord, a while ago, had me go to uh, Jude, and um, Jude, who, uh, uh, it's amazing, you, you ever have somebody famous, and the first thing, oh, do you know this one, do you know that one, I know that one, I know this one. Jude is the half-brother of Jesus, and the, and the brother of James, and yet he doesn't call himself well, I'm Jude, the half-brother of Jesus. You better listen to moi. No, he says, put up PowerPoint number one. He says, I am a bond servant. A bond servant. I said, Lord, what is this thing about a bond servant? It's a person who's a slave. It, it's a person who is bound into service to somebody else. He never identified himself as a brother, but a bondservant. So Jude wrote this letter to Christians. He had tremendous pain for what was going on in the church. He wanted to warn his readers. He wanted to protect them from harm. He wanted to guard them from attack and, and uh, repudiate the enemy that was coming into the church, just like what's happening today. By the way, it's no different then as it is today. It's the same difference. He wanted to get guard against false teachers. These teachers claimed to be Christians. But they were being in great danger of the faith. Faith. They were going to undermine the faith, challenge the faith, reject the faith. The message of the Lord Jesus Christ, that he is the only way to salvation, was being watered down. Well, son, there's many ways. Many ways to get there. God's word of eternal life, God's gift to us. I don't understand why everybody at praise and worship is not jumping up and down, praising the Lord, thanking Him that they have life and life eternal. They should be so rejoicing. They should be saying, whoa, isn't this great? But of course, when I first came to the Lord, I was very, praise you. It's nice. Very stoic. Couldn't move my feet. Even the jazz musician, Trumpets of Glory, he was a jazz. He couldn't. He said, you all, you religious people, get your feet moving. Move it to the left. Move it to the right. Move it to the left. Raise your hand. Shout aloud. 
And I stood there like this. I couldn't move. Because I was trained to be very stoic and religious. I don't know how you are when you get excited about something. But I would say, hey, hey, would you get excited if something great just happened to you? One of your children, well, a baby was born, uh, 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 you just won something, you just got something that you always dreamed of. What expression would you have on your face? Joy, huh? Happy, happy, happy. happy. Joy, joy, joy. So what is the, why don't we worship him for what he's done for us? Do we understand that there is really a heaven and a hell? Do we understand that we've been taken out of the darkness, out of this day and age? Do we understand our hearts have been delivered from slavery and sin? We are no longer under bandage. We are a free people. Woo hoo hoo. I got to get a woo hoo around here. We are. There you go. We are a free people, aren't we? Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Preach it. But opposition was coming from every source, and Judah's saying that opposition is destroying the church. It's taking you out. PowerPoint 2, please. Heresy is proclaiming to be Christians but rejects all the beliefs that Christ is the only way to the Father and they had opposite opinions. That's a heretic. Opposite opinions. Opposite opinions. You know when I, I talked to you a, a few weeks ago, maybe three or four weeks ago, about Jehovah Witness. And you have these, by the way, for those who don't have the sheets, uh, I didn't make these up for you. But for those who are new here, we have sheets outside called, it's right on the wall as you come in, Christianity, Cults, and Religions. It talks about all the religions, cults, as opposed to Christianity. So here's, I just want to read a few things. Here's what Jehovah Witness says about Jesus. Jesus is not God. Before he lived on earth, he was Michael the archangel. Jehovah made the universe through him on earth. He was a man who lived a perfect life after dying on a stake, not a cross. He was resurrected as a spirit. His body was destroyed. Jesus is not coming again. He returned invisible in 1914 in spirit. And very soon, he and the angels will destroy all non-Jehovah Witnesses. Oh my God. That's the Jehovah Witness doctrine. There are many ways. Here's Islam. Jesus is one of 124,000 prophets sent by God into various cultures throughout the world. Abraham, Moses, and Muhammad are others prophets. Jesus was born of a virgin, but is not the son of God. There it is. He was sinless, but not divine, and God himself. He was not crucified on the, not crucified, and the ascension to heaven was without dying, he re was referred to as Messiah and a, son of, and a sign of God. Jesus will return in the future to live and die again. That's Islam. I'm only going through three of these, so listen to this. I'm trying to prove a point. Judaism. Jesus is either seen as an extreme false Messiah or a good but martyred Jewish rabbi teacher. Many Jews do not consider Jesus at all. Jews, except Messianic Jews, of which we're going to, in a couple of weeks, to have a Messianic hoo-how. <laughs> oh, I love when Rabbi David starts dancing and singing, and oh, man. 
Do you know I could play, I used to lead worship, I could play a Jewish song and everybody get up and dance. Hallelujah. It is something about Jewish music that gets your feet a moving. Yes. Hebrew Christians uh, do not believe, uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Jews do not believe he was the Messiah, the Son of God, and that he rose from the dead. Orthodox Jews believe the Messiah will come in the future, but not Jesus. One more. Christian science. Jesus was not the Christ, but a man who displayed a Christ idea. Christ means perfection, not a person. Jesus was not God, and God could never become a man or flesh. He did not suffer, and he could not suffer for sins. He did not die on a cross. He was not resurrected physically. He will not literally come back to redeem people. That's only four of the 15 I have here. Please get this sheet on the way out. What is it? Christianity, Cults, and Religions. I want you to take this. We have them out there. Apostasy is a total desertion and departure, disaffiliation and abandonment and renunciation of Jesus as the true and only Savior. Apostasy. Heresy. They embrace belief and opinions contrary to what they were when they came to the Lord. Do you know how many people switch later after they come to the Lord and they start taking on a lot of new ideas, a lot of new things? I gave you a heresy sheet. Ready? Take out your heresy sheet. <coughs> and it says on the heresy sheet... Teaches contrary to the truth. Teachings contrary to the truth. The heresy, what they were teaching in those days, is the spirit is good, all your personal matter is evil. The Bible says God created heaven and earth for his glory. By the way, all the references are in Colossians in the middle. You want to look it up? could all look it up in the middle. That's why Colossians is such a powerful book of the Bible. It depicts who Jesus is. One must follow ceremonies, the heresy. You've got to follow rituals, restrictions, in order to be saved or perfected. And on the Bible's answer, there were only shadows that ended when Christ came. He's all you need to be saved. He's all you need to be saved. You got it, guys? This is not one from column A and one from column B. Oh, they're good people. Oh, they went to heaven. Oh, Lord. I've never been to a funeral where somebody went to hell. Never. Everybody goes to heaven. They were a good person. Oh, Lord, help us. Jesus says there's none good, no, not one. I am the only way. If it was up to our good nature, we'd all be in deep trouble. Amen. One must deny the body and live in strict ascentism. You know what ascentism is? It's a doctrine that a person can attain a higher state by doing things. You go, you got to self-mortify yourself. You got to stay away, and you got to do all these hard things. Self uh, beating the body. In other words, they're saying, "Jesus, get off the cross. I'll show you what it is to really get to heaven." Your cross is not the only way. I'll show you what I can do to get there. Ascentism is no help in conquering evil, thoughts and desires. It leads to pride. Angels must be worshipped. I, 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 you know, my wife comes from the Catholic Church, and many times there's a lot of Catholic men in a hot tub, and I'm dealing with them in, in this way. They idolize saints, and they pray to saints, and they pray for Mary. I say, you know, 
But, and I keep telling them, Jesus, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah, but Jesus loved his mother, so we got to honor the mother. Jesus honored the mother at the cross, said, John, behold your mother. I said, yes, but, uh, and, and Mary had no other children. She was a very, she, other than the Holy Spirit, I said, what about Mark 3.31, where I want to show you your brothers and sisters are out here. They want to speak with you. He says, oh, that's just uh, brothers and sisters in, in, the, in the message, in the gospel. It's not his real brothers and sisters. That's what I get. So they believe in Mary as a pure virgin outside of the Holy Spirit in some instances. This is just swaying from the truth of who Christ is and what he's done. I fear for people in their thinking, in their doctrine, in their beliefs. Next, Christ could not be both human and divine. Christ is God in the flesh. He's a, he, he is the eternal one, head of the body, first in everything. One must obtain secret knowledge in order to be saved and perfect. And this was not available to everyone. God's secret is Christ. He's been revealed to all. By the way, these were all the teachings that were coming down. This was the heresy in those days. How far is that off from today? One must adhere to human wisdom, traditions, and philosophies. The Bible says this can be misleading because they have human origin. We should remember what Christ taught and follow his word as our ultimate authority. It is even better to combine different aspects of religion. Take a little from Judaism, a little from Christ's teaching, a little from the Greeks, a little from this one, a little from that one, and we'll get the best of everything. And the answer is, you have Christ alone. You have Christ alone. He is everything you'll ever need. I don't know why people don't worship him, shout aloud, shake this building out, rock this neighborhood. I don't understand why, for what he has done for us, we are so... What's the word? Tight, constricted. Tight, restricted. Rigid. Rigid. Why? Do you really know the goodness of God and where you're really headed? Do you really, do you really understand that? And the last one, there's nothing wrong with being immoral. Wickedness, evil, and sexuality, immorality was okay. And they were teaching that that day. I'm going to get into that with you in a minute. They were teaching that. This is a heresy sheet that is still being applied today. Next one. So Jude 1 says, I'm a bondservant of Jesus Christ, a brother of James. Writes this letter to those who are called God's chosen ones, the elect, dearly loved by God the Father, kept and secured and set apart for Jesus Christ. What are the key words? You are chosen. You are called. You are loved by the Father. And you are set apart to worship him. That's what he's saying. Called, loved, set apart. I, you know, every time I see these, I get excited. I want to break out into worship right now. I really do. I will soon. I, Thank you, Jesus. God has called you to love Him. God loves the people. He gives you inner strength every day. God is keeping them for Jesus. He sets them apart. What does Philippians 1, 6 says? He who began a good work in you will complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. 
You have an inheritance that's incorruptible. When you receive Christ, your life should radically change. Your lifestyle should change. Now, we had, we had a, um, well, I love Celebrate Recovery, by the way. If you don't come to Celebrate Recovery, you're missing a treat. Celebrate Recovery, or Celebrate Life, as they say, when, when people are stuck, they can't believe God's word for themselves personally. If you believe God's word for yourself personally, you would be electrified. Amen. You think the youth are electrified the way they dance and do their things? A Christian on fire for God is electrified. Amen. <clears throat> Next one, Jude 2. May mercy, peace, and love, everybody say that. May mercy. mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you, filling your heart with the spiritual well-being and, and serenity experienced by those who walk intimately and close with God. May mercy, peace, and love be applied unto you. God's mercy. God's mercy is that you're not getting what you deserve. Amen. God's mercy. If we got what we deserved, we all be in deep trouble. God's mercy, you know, God's uh, mercy and grace, His grace is giving us the good things despite ourselves. That's what He does. You ever see God bless you despite yourself? It's happened so many times. God's in a peace, Philippians 4, 7. The peace of God will guard your mind and heart in Christ Jesus. He's the only peace. You know, we, my wife and I counsel, we must have counseled over the last 25 years, tens of thousands of people, sessions. Do you know there is no peace without Jesus in the center of your circumstance? There is no peace. He is our peace. Yes. Next PowerPoint, Jude 3. Beloved, while I was making every effort to write you about our common salvation, by the way, your salvation is not common. It's not like common, like a vanilla ice cream, chocolate ice cream. It's not common. What he means by common is that I have a common love of God, the Holy Spirit, that God's word is illuminated in them, their faith. That's common among believers. Common salvation. I was compelled to write to you. You know what that word compelled to write to you? The appealing that you... Fight strenuously in defense of the faith. Contend strenuously, which was once handed down to all the saints. The faith that is the sum of a Christian belief that was given verbally to all believers. Do you know what contending means? It's like a wrestling match. Yeah. Who here ever went into wrestling when they were a kid? Anybody a wrestler? Got one wrestler. I know I have my, my nephew, um, Sean, is in wrestling. When David Rosenberg was the New York State ch uh, Championship in the state wrestling, contending for the faith. Do you know what you got to do to win over the enemy? What does the word a wrestling match or contending mean to you? What, what words pop up? Fighting a good fight. Fighting a good fight? Prevailing. Huh? Prevailing. What else? Contending. Tenacious. Tenacious. Come on, guys. Persevere. 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 Determine. Going after. What is that? Overcoming. Overcoming. Single-minded. Single Single yes. Not quitting. Not quitting. 
Right. To the death. To the death. Always arguing for the faith. Always defending the faith. There aren't many ways that your family and friends are going to heaven. I got news for you guys. Only one way. <laughs> Pastor Lisa preached on hell. You ought to get that message. This, this is not a joke. Amen. This is not... Ha, ha, we all went to church, check it off, bing, 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 bing. I'm not here giving you a message. I want you to get serious in contending for the faith of the gospel. That you need to challenge people that Christ is the only way. I worry for our grandchildren. I worry for our children. I worry for the future generations that are watering down the gospel of Christ. There's so many things coming into the gospel that everybody is just, oh, they're nice, they're good people, oh, how sweet they are, please. Amen. I'm not soft-soaping anybody. You know, my wife and I and Pastor Lisa and every leader here Fears have a reverent fear of God than pleasing people. Right. I had to get out of the people pleasing business. Amen. And I had to get into God, what do you want? Hallelujah. I want to I want to encourage you, saints. Get strong in who Christ is. Not all this other stuff. For certain people have crept in unnoticed just as they were sneaking in by the side door. You know, I had, a, I had a pastor come to me and said, you know, I had this guy come into the church. He was like, wow, really um, anointed. And within two years, he sowed into people. He loved them. He was aggressive. And then I went on vacation for two weeks. And then when I came back, half the church was against me. They left. He said, I never expected that. How did this ever happen? They crept in. You know, God challenges my heart with motive. Why do you do what you do? And it's amazing. False teachers think they're right also. They are ungodly persons who can, whose condemnation was predicted long ago for they distort the grace of God into decadence. And what decadence? Depravity. Immoral. <coughs> luxurious self-indulgence. Falling into an inferior state of mind. Decadent. And an immoral freedom, viewing it as an opportunity to do whatever they want, they deny and disown our only master, the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to stop here. I have part two next week. You know, you know why I'm, I'm so concerned about this message? Verse 5 to 15 tells the end of their life. It tells the end of their life. And he uses, because he's speaking to Hebrew Christians and all believers, he uses the Old Testament to tell them exactly what's going to happen to them, these teachers, these heretics, these one who have apostasy. What's going to happen to them, just like it happened in the Old Testament? I'm begging you, I'm begging you, I'm begging you as a pastor of this church. Don't ever compromise or be wishy-washy about who Christ is and what he's done for you. Don't ever bring in another gospel into your heart and challenge your family, challenge your children, challenge your parents, challenge your grandparents. I'm telling you, this is not a joke. This is serious. Take your heresy sheet and turn it over. I want to close on a positive note. You got heresy sheets? Oh, go get them. Get t Terry, get them a heresy sheet. Christ. 
Christ, what does it say on the top of that sheet? Absolute supremacy. Everybody say it. Christ. Absolute supremacy. God is, God is Christ. Christ is God. Jesus Christ is God in the flesh, the Lord of all creation, the Lord of new creation. He is the expression, the express reflection of the invisible God. He is eternal, pre-existent, omnipotent, all power, equal with the Father. He is supreme and complete. Amen. You know what the end of that is? Period. <laughs> no but, no and. Because Christ is supreme, our life must be Christ-centered. To recognize him as God means to regard our relationship with him as the most vital, the most vital, the most vital. And to make his interest our top priority. Amen. Not children, not grandchildren, not spouses, not jobs, not money. Christ is our top priority. Not your 401k, not where you're retiring, not how many vacations you go on, not anything like that. Who cares? You're not taking anything with you anyhow. Amen. Naked you came in. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> And without Christ, naked you'll go out. Wow, wow, wow. But with Christ, you'll go out. Hallelujah. <laughs> Christ is the head of the church. Because Christ is God, he is the head of the church. Christ is the founder, the leader, and the highest authority on earth. He requires first place in all our thoughts and activities. Bingo. Amen. Amen. To acknowledge Christ as our head, we must welcome his leadership into all we do or think. No leadership... No person, group, or church can regard any loyalty as more critical than a loyalty to our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. What are you loyal to today? You know, and when I do counseling, I do priorities. Especially with couples. What is your priority in life? Oh, I get this all the time. I said, what do you think about or live the most in in your thoughts and activity? And I usually get, well, well the one I things I think of work... And uh, maybe uh, children, and then what else? Um, bills. bills, money. And I, I keep going down the list. That, by the way, they're in for marriage counseling. Oh my God. Uh, and then somewhere down the list comes my wife. Somewhere down there comes that. Then comes God, somewhere after all that. Then I asked the wife. She does a little better because she's a um, relationship. She loves nesting. She does relationships. So, you know, wives do a little better on their list. <laughs> they put the husband not fifth or sixth, but maybe third. <laughs> but they put their children... First, all the time. All the time. God is somewhere at the end of the list. I said, how do you expect to have a marriage if Christ is not the center of this marriage and you, and you have all these other priorities? How, I said, so I turned to the men and I say, how do you think your wife feels if she's your fifth priority? Like, all right, ladies. How would you feel if you were the fifth priority of your husband? Give me your words. Neglected. Neglected. Terrible. Terrible. Ignored. Ignored. Taken for granted. Abandoned. Abandoned. Disrespected. Unloved. Uncared for. Not appreciated. Mm -hmm. Abused. Abused. And they go, oh, oh. She would feel that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Number three, union with Christ. I'll close with this. Because our sin has been forgiven, we have been reconciled to God. Amen. We have union with Christ that can never be broken. In our faith connection with him, we identify with his death, burial, and resurrection. Amen. We should live in constant contact and communication with God and with the Holy Spirit. When we do, 
we will be unified with Christ and one another. There is no unity outside of Jesus. People pretend to love you. Every love outside of God is conditional love. I, I got a condition. You rub my back, I rub your back. You do for me, I'll do for you. You don't do for me, I'll give you a whack. <laughs> conditional love is, is very hurtful. <laughs> Last one. Man-made religion. False teachers in this time were promoting heresy that stressed self-made rules, legalism. They also sought spiritual growth by disciplining of the body, asceticism, and visions, mysticism. Jews are big for that, the mystics. The search created pride and their self-centered efforts. The last thing we must not cling to in our own ideas and try to bend them into Christianity. Nor should we let our hunger for a more fulfilling Christian experience cause us to trust in a teacher or a system or thought more than in Christ himself. Christ is our source, our only source, and our truth and our wisdom. I thank the Lord for his saints. I thank the Lord for the people that are here. Lord, I pray that each and every one would understand the message of Christ in them, the hope of glory. That they would be filled, filled with the revelation of what you've done for them. Lord, that you would transform them from the inside out. That you would deliver them, Lord from the words that were spoken to them as a child. You would deliver them from the values that they said, I'm only valuable of certain things that I do or become. I, I pray, Lord, that their value, their heart, their love would come only because of your love for them and your acceptance. May they receive that love as never before. May they, each and every one here, Every child of God, know that they know, no matter what anybody says about them, if it's not lined up with what God says about them, they would reject that. They would set that aside and say, Lord, but you, but you, but you, you love me, you died for me, you have mercy and grace upon me. I am your child. We hope you enjoyed today's message. If you would like to hear more, we encourage you to visit our website at regenerationchurchny.com. So if you're ever in the area, please stop by. We'd love to have you at our Regeneration Church Sunday service or our tender-hearted message on Monday night. Again, we thank you for watching, and may God richly bless you.